My name is Daenerys... Daenerys Stormborn of the House Targaryen. You know me, my lord? Only by reputation, Carlisi. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're recounting the origins of House Targaryen. In those days, House Targaryen stood at the height of its strength with 10 adult dragons under its yoke. For this video, we're looking at this mighty house and charting its history from the Doom of Valyria all the way up to the events of House of the Dragon. Who's your favorite Targaryen? Share with us in the comments. Before House Targaryen was the major power player in Westeros, we have to cross the Narrow Sea all the way to the eastern continent of Essos. There, a civilization known as the Valyrian Freehold reigned supreme, seated in the city of Old Valyria, obviously then known just as Valyria. The Valyrian capital was built into a volcano, much like Dragonstone. And the Dragon Lords, the highest of the nobility, lived here, at the volcanic face, closest to the source of their magic and power. The Valyrians had a mastery over magic and dragons, giving them near-omnipotent power in the realm for thousands of years. The Targaryens were at this time just one of the many dragon lords, but everything changed when fire rained down from the sky. You know what they say? The doom still rules Valyria. What about the demons and the flames? Aren't you afraid of the doom? The Doom of Valyria, as it's most commonly called, is exactly what it sounds like. The utter destruction of the Freehold Society. A city of a thousand years, and all that men had learned. The Doom consumed it all alike, and neither of them turned. I would clap. Though it's not entirely known what caused it, be it a perfect natural disaster or a consequence of great sorcery, the 14 fires completely devastated the region when a series of volcanic eruptions went off simultaneously. Even the dragons, who were thought to hold complete mastery over fire, succumbed to the flames. And along with them, every known dragon lord. But there were a select few dragons and lords that avoided the doom altogether, all of which hailed from House Targaryen. I am Daenerys Stormborn of House Targaryen, of the blood of old Valyria, I am the dragon's daughter. Whereas all the other Valyrians saw themselves as indestructible, one Targaryen named Daenys foresaw the doom in a dream. It was a dream. And just as Daenys foresaw the end of Valyria, Aegon foresaw the end of the world of men. This would be just the first of the many dragon dreams that would go on to shape House Targaryen's destiny. Thankfully, Daenys was able to convince her father, Aenar Targaryen, of the looming threat. And so, the Targaryens made their storied journey across the Narrow Sea to Westeros, where their Valyrian influence would shape the continent forever. Welcome to Dragonstone, Otto. After settling on what would become their ancestral home, Dragonstone, the Targaryens found themselves drawn back into conflict with the goings-on of Essos. A high-born knight from the north of Westeros, down on his luck in Essos. In the wake of the doom, a mad scramble began that saw eight colonies tenuously rise up and jockey for power in a period that would be known as the Century of Blood. We'll give you one guess as to how that turned out. <laughs> A single colony, Volantis, sought to rebuild the Freehold by conquering all other colonies under its rule. The colonies united to resist Volantis, but it was Aegon Targaryen's dragon influence that swayed the tide against the Volantines. Dracarys. From here, the colonies were shaped into the nine free cities that we know today, including Volantis. A toast to Aegon the Conqueror. You exalted forebear. You joined our cause against Volantis in a century of blood. On the great dragon Balerion, he flew to our aid in Lys and burned a fleet of enemy ships, thus turning the tide. However, Aegon's distance from the world of Essos disenchanted him with his house's legacy. He sought to create a new legacy for the Targaryens, and Westeros was just the place to do it. Have I said something funny, sir? Forgive me, Khaleesi, but your ancestor, Aegon the Conqueror, didn't seize six of the kingdoms because they were his right. He had no right to them. He seized them because he could. And because he had dragons. <sighs> well, 
Having a few dragons makes things easier. On top of this, Aegon experienced the second known dragon dream, and this one would prove to be more crucial than any of them. Just to begin with a terrible winter, gusting out of the distant north. He foresaw the coming of the White Walkers, a personification of death itself that would require the unification of the realm to defeat. Not just that, but Aegon predicted the prince that was promised, a future Targaryen who would defeat the impending threat. All of Westeros must stand against it. And if the world of men is to survive, a Targaryen must be seated on the Iron Throne. A king or queen, strong enough to unite the realm against the cold and the dark. Obviously, the events of Game of Thrones depict these developments, but we still don't have confirmation as to who exactly the prince that was promised is. In fact, the High Valyrian word for prince is gender neutral, meaning it could be a prince or a princess. In any case, this vision of Aegon's, which he would dub the Song of Ice and Fire, would influence generations to come in preparation for it. This secret, it's been passed from king to heir since Aegon's time. Now you must promise to carry it and protect it. To prepare for this coming winter, Aegon set out to enact the Targaryen version of Manifest Destiny, conquering the rest of Westeros and uniting it under their rule. This war of conquest was achieved thanks to Aegon's mighty dragon Balerion, as well as those of his sister wives Rhaenys and Visenya. Hey, this is House Targaryen we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just Aegon riding his dragon. It was Rhaenys and Visenya too. Correct. Student of history, are you? Six of the seven kingdoms were conquered, all save for the scrappy nation of Dorne. Despite the incomplete set, King Aegon would be known as Aegon the Conqueror, and arguably the most influential Targaryen who ever lived. You're already wed. That didn't stop Aegon the Conqueror from taking a second wife. You are no conqueror. Following this, Aegon founded King's Landing, where future kings and queens would rule the Seven Kingdoms. He also created the Iron Throne, a gaudy amalgamation of swords that would be a fixture in the designs of power players for generations to come. What do a thousand swords look like in the mind of a little girl who can't count to 20? I imagined a mountain of swords too high to climb. So many fallen enemies, you could only see the soles of Aegon's feet. Speaking of power players, they say that whenever a Targaryen is born, the gods flip a coin when it comes to their madness. Half the Targaryens went mad, didn't they? What's the saying? Every time a Targaryen is born, the gods flip a coin. As such, House Targaryen got rulers of both varieties over the years after Aegon's death. Aenys Targaryen, Aegon's firstborn by way of Rhaenys, was first to take the throne. However, the Targaryens' continued traditions, like marrying their own siblings, made an enemy out of the Faith of the Seven, the premier religion in the Seven Kingdoms. The Faith militant drove Aenys out of King's Landing, but Maegor, Aegon's other son by way of Visenya, did what his brother slash cousin could not. Who built the Iron Throne? Aegon the Conqueror. And who built the Red Keep? Maegor the Cruel. Megor proved his family's legitimacy in a holy trial by combat of sorts. So I will let the gods decide my fate. I demand a trial by combat. Megor proved to be one of these mad kings, earning the title of Megor the Cruel in his continued battle against the faith. However, as Megor had no children of his own, the realm passed on to Anus' son, Jaehaerys. King Jaehaerys reigned over nearly 60 years of peace and prosperity, but tragedy had claimed both his sons, leaving his succession in doubt. A benevolent king, Jaehaerys cleaned up Megor's mess by making peace with the faith. Part of this came with the understanding that the Targaryens would continue to mate with their own kin, as Jaehaerys went on to wed his sister, Alysan. And tell me, Lord Undarion, did you think my great-grandmother is beautiful as they say? This was half a century ago, princess. Yes, it was. <laughs> the realm experienced a period of peace for some time, as the line of succession eventually passed through Jaehaerys' grandson Viserys, though some would find this controversial. Jaehaerys called the Great Council to prevent a war being fought over his succession, for he knew the cold truth the only thing that could tear down the House of the Dragon was itself. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. This leads us into the events of House of the Dragon, where we're already seeing the pieces put in play for the storied Dance of the Dragons, a period of a great war of succession within House Targaryen. I have decided to name a new heir. I'm your heir. Not anymore. Meanwhile, Viserys does his best to make sure his successors are prepared to face the new impending doom when Aegon's Song of Ice and Fire comes to pass. The responsibility I have handed to you the burden of this knowledge. It is larger than the throne, the king. It is larger than you. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.